standing at 6 foot 3 and weighing 220 pounds, Mike Kyle cuts an intimidating figure. But that intimidation factor didn't just rest on his ability to put people to sleep, but also from his hot temper and willingness to cross any line to win a fight. He has competed in nearly every MMA organization, and almost every one of them has kicked him out for blatantly breaking the rules and being dirty. So let's take a deeper look into what Kyle has done in his nearly two decade long career. Prior to making his MMA debut, Kyle was regarded as a pretty special athlete. As mentioned before, he was 6 feet 3 and weighed every bit of 220, which is why he played as a fullback in football for Butte College and Eastern Oregon University. It's a scary sight imagining someone that big moving quick enough to earn an invite from the San Francisco 49ers. But Kyle turned that invite down as he was more interested in fighting which he had picked up in his high school days. Clearly, he had the physical attributes that not many heavyweights possessed, so he was already in an advantageous position when he started competing in MMA. This is one of the reasons why Kyle is thought of as one of the worst dirty fighters in MMA history. He had all the tools to be successful without needing the resort to dirty tactics. And it would be early in Kyle's career when he started showing off his dirty habits and becoming infamous rather than famous. At UFC 47, Kyle made his UFC debut. He was originally set to fight Tim Sylvia, but Sylvia failed the drug test, and Wes Sims took the fight on just a day's notice. The fight wouldn't be too competitive, however, as Kyle dominated Sims and ended up knocking him out just a second before the round ended. So far, so good. Nothing dirty. But that was until Sims started to protest, pointing at the bite marks on his chest, which the cameras could see clearly. Wes Sims has bite marks on his chest where Mike Kyle bit him when he was in his guard. Somewhere during the fight, Kyle had bitten Sims so badly that the bruising around the bite appeared seconds later. Now, Wes Sims has a mark on his chest where it looks like you bit him. He's a dirty bastard anyways. Come on. All the shit he's done. This was the first time someone had bitten anyone in the UFC since UFC 1. Biting is often regarded as one of the lowest things you can do in a fight as it is so barbaric. But the odd thing about this one was that Kyle was always in the dominant position, so it wasn't like he was frustrated and desperate and acted out. Kyle would be released shortly by the organization despite having a winning record in his UFC run. But his very first fight post UFC demonstrated that UFC had definitely dodged a bullet by releasing Kyle. After his UFC tenure, Kyle fought in the famed Pancrase organization. There, he took on the Japanese fighter Suyoshi Kosaka. The fight was a closely contested affair, however, in the third round. The referee determined that Kosaka was too injured to go on. Kyle ended up winning a technical decision because of this. Now, you might be wondering why Kosaka was too injured to go on. What happened to the Japanese legend? Well, Kyle eye gouged him during the fight and the referee didn't see it. The eye gouging ended up damaging Kosaka's cornea and he couldn't compete. Such action is always considered to be despicable as eye gouging not only gives you an immediate advantage, but can damage your opponent long term because it doesn't take much to cause permanent injury to the eye. So it's no wonder why Kyle was one and done with Pancrase. The next organization that would take Mike Kyle Gamble would be Strike Force. For their Shamrock vs. Gracie event, Kyle was set up to fight Krzysztof Sojinski. In this fight, Kyle pulled off a double whammy. Not only did he foul Kristoff once, but he did it twice, with the second time resulting in the fight being called off in the very first round. The first dirty play came along the fence, where Kyle kneed Kristoff below the belt. Sosinski hit with a low knee. And as Kristoff winced in pain and the ref was clearly separating them for the low blow, Kyle threw a combination at Kristoff's head and partially landed. If that was someone else, it wouldn't really be considered dirty because well, low blows are just part of the game. It happens pretty much in every show. But because of Kyle's past, the action becomes even more highlighted. But what he did next is absolutely dirty. After the action resumed, Kyle threw a jab at Kristoff, but his hands were clearly open and his finger went into Kristoff's eye, causing him severe pain. Oh, there's a punch. Uh, finger. Got a finger in the eye. He did. Here's the finger. You see the punch, the left come up just short. The fingers fly out. I mean, come on, who throws a jab with their fingers extended? That is not a technique that is taught in any gym. It was blatantly dirty, and the ref rightfully called the fight off after Kristoff struggled to see properly. 
So you'd think that after so many fouls and having a dirty fighter reputation would make Kyle change the way that he approached a fight. But that would just be wishful thinking, as Kyle was yet to commit the worst offense of his career. This took place just a couple of months after Kristoff's incident. Somehow Kyle had managed to get himself in the position to challenge for the WEC heavyweight title against Brian Olsen. Now, as many of you know, kicking a downed opponent or soccer kicks are banned in the majority of organizations, especially ones in America. It seems as if Kyle forgot this obvious fact as he tossed Olsen down to the ground and landed a clean soccer kick to Olsen's head. After the soccer kick, Kyle repeatedly punched Olsen even as the referee tried to intervene and separate the two. Kyle's assault would continue until people from outside the cage came inside to assist the referee in subduing Kyle. That was totally illegal. He was kicking a down fighter. And he kept going. Yeah, it was that bad. For his actions, Kyle earned himself a spot on the national suspension list and was given an 18-month ban. WEC also elected to suspend Kyle from ever competing in any of their organizational events ever again. Many actually believe that Kyle deserved a lifetime ban from competing in MMA. But Kyle did compete afterward, losing via armbar after his two-year layoff. And by now you must think Kyle had rehabbed his image and learned from his mistakes. But it seemed as if no matter where he went, trouble followed. Two years after returning to fighting, Kyle fought in the King of the Cage event against Travis Weah. Originally, Kyle got the best of Travis as he hurt and dropped him badly near the end of the round. The doctor ended up calling the fight in the second round, but later it was determined that the main punishing blows landed by Kyle were after the bell had sounded. So the win was overturned in a no contest, and Kyle had yet another dirty incident on his record. However, that would be the last major incident in Kyle's career. After that, Kyle would fight for another nine years, where he lost several big fights, but won a few as well. So maybe the time off really did serve to improve Kyle's temper. Or maybe he spent that time reading the MMA rulebook so he knows exactly what he can do and can't do inside the octagon. Either way, Kyle ended his career on a four-fight losing streak as he retired in 2019. But despite rehabilitating his image somewhat, fans still best remember Kyle for his dirty tactics, especially his actions in the Olsen fight. Kyle's final record would be 23-19 with 17 KO wins. However, he also had a biting incident, two eye gouging or eye poking incidents, an illegal soccer kick and an assault afterward, and finally a strike after the bell. All in all, Kyle definitely earned himself that dirty fighter reputation. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell beside it so that you're notified the next time we upload a new video. And with that being said, you just watched us break down one of the dirtiest fighters in MMA history, Mike Kyle. We'll see you next time.